I just want to say a few things. I do not plan on taking a lot of time. But I do want to say a few things concerning the election. Anyone who has paid attention to our ministry over the last several months and years, uh, you understand and you know that we teach and we believe that it is the responsibility of the church to walk in the will of God, whatever God's will may be. The Word of God teaches that it is God who elevates men to high office, that God is the one who is in charge of who winds up becoming a king and who winds up becoming a president. And although there are people in this country today who will try to tell you that evil has won out and they try to demonize the other side of the aisle and those of us who embrace uh, a more liberal mentality when it comes to American politics, I want to tell you, according to the Word of God, God's will has been accomplished. When we prayed concerning this election, I did not assume that I knew who the winner of this election would be. Therefore, I was not so foolish as to pray for a specific outcome. If you were with us last Sunday, then you know I'm telling the truth. When we prayed for this election, I simply prayed that it would be legitimate, that it would be valid, that all the attempts to hinder it, all the attempts to affect it uh, would not work, and that ultimately in the end, the will of the people would be accomplished, uh, the, the will of the American people would be accomplished. That is what I prayed last Sunday. That is what I have been praying. I told Tommy, so I don't know if God wants to keep Trump in there for another four years to accomplish something else in his plan. Uh, I don't know. I hope not, because I was stressed out, you know, with this whole thing. But I told Tommy, I said, you know, I don't know the mind of God. I don't know the will of God in this matter. And uh, so therefore, I could not pray for a specific outcome. The will of God tells us that when we pray outside of the will of God, we are asking amiss. We're asking for what we want, not for what God wants. And uh, the Word of God also teaches us that when we pray according to the will of God, He'll give us that which we ask. So our primary desire today as God's people ought always to be that God's will be done. If you notice the Lord, when he give us an exemplary prayer, uh, his example in prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now that does not mean that the same things that are happening in heaven ought to be happening on earth. That's absurd. But what the Lord was saying was, in the same fashion that God's will is carried out in heaven, it, is, it ought to be our desire that His will, whatever that may be, be carried out in earth. Amen. And so today we celebrate the outcome of this election because, yes, in this instance, uh, it is an outcome that we believe in our limited human understanding uh, is the best possible outcome. And it certainly was the outcome that many of us today, most of us probably watching this broadcast, hoped for. And I am elated. I am thrilled out of my mind today uh, at the outcome of this election. Uh, many of us have been able to breathe the collective sigh of relief. There has been such a sense of, you know, uh, just this relaxation has come over people. 
uh, so many in our nation, so many in our world today, no longer feel that in the next administration they will be under attack. And for this we're grateful, amen. Uh, I believe we will have a government and administration that once again is going to embrace uh, compassion, that once again is going to embrace hospitality from a biblical standard. We're going to treat the foreigner, we're going to treat the immigrant, we're going to treat those seeking asylum in a fashion uh, that is in keeping with goodness and righteousness. And again, I repeat, righteousness, we're going to get into this again in our message today. Righteousness is not owned by the church. You can be the biggest sinner on the planet and still live a righteous life, meaning you seek to do right. It simply means, righteousness literally means to do right. And so I believe our next administration is going to seek to do right by the immigrant, by those seeking asylum, by those who come to this country uh, seeking a better life and a better way. We are a nation that for two centuries now, almost two and a half centuries, we have been a place that many people look to almost like heaven on earth. I mean, many people uh, who are coming from dictatorships, many people who are coming from socialist and communist countries, they look to America as this place of wonder and promise, and as, as Kamala, I keep wanting to call her Pamela, as Kamala Harris said last night, a place of possibility. Amen. And they come here uh, seeing America as a place of possibility. And it has been a horror show. It has been a nightmare for the last four years to see how people seeking a better life and trying to find uh, their place in the world where they might have opportunity and possibilities. And they've been met with violence. Tearing children away from their parents is violence, folks. I don't care how gently you do it. That is an act of violence. You are literally visiting violence upon people when you take their children from them. And then for these children uh, later to not even be in a position to be reunited with their parents because things were done in such, such a hasty and careless fashion. There was no thought from the beginning of this policy. There was no thought in the world of reuniting these people with their children. If they had had that thought, they would have done something in the way of a policy to ensure that the children and the parents were properly, you know, connected uh, so that they could later reunite them. But obviously, that was not even a thought in our current administration's head. And so, I do believe that under uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's leadership, we are not a nation ruled by kings. We do not have, uh, you know, final authorities. We do not have a dictator in the White House. We're supposed to have a servant. You know, I wish everybody would read George Washington's farewell address to the nation. Look it up online. Read George Washington's farewell address to the nation when he decided he was no longer going to run for president. He did not, people would have made him a king. He was so popular. People would have gladly made him uh, an emperor, made him a king, made him a, what amounts to a, a dictator. And he saw the danger in this, and he said, no, we just left this. And there are many people on the right side of the aisle today, many people who support, you know, the Republican Party today, who would have been just as happy to make Donald Trump a dictator and allow him full authority as the dictator. And I, I actually had people say to me that, 
Uh, they didn't see anything wrong with that. But they thought that would be fine. Folks, there's an old saying, and it's been proven true over and over and over again throughout history. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. We saw Mr. Trump with the limitations placed upon him by a democratic republic, a constitutional republic. We saw Mr. Trump trying to behave like a dictator and becoming angry and frustrated and retaliating against people, including states, entire states, because they did not do things the way that he thought they should be done. We saw this man's character. We saw this man's heart and what, what he's made of. You would have to be a bloody idiot to want this man to have unbridled authority in America. With bridled authority, he was out of his mind, out of control, retaliatory, angry, malicious. You've got to remember, look at every electoral map in every state in the Union during this election. You had areas covered in red, indicating votes from Republicans from these areas. Then you had areas covered in blue that indicated that the Democratic vote carried the day in that particular area. There is not one state that was all blue. There was not one state that was solid red. Well, what does that tell you, including California, including New York? What does that tell you? I'll tell you what it tells you. Even in what Donald Trump categorizes as democratic states or democratic cities, because they have a democratic governor or they have a democratic mayor or because the, the democratic vote tends to carry the day in that particular state, he divided our country up according to Republican states and Democratic states, and he actually punished or attempted to punish so-called Democratic states and Democratic cities. Folks, are you so foolish as to not understand that as he's doing this, he's also punishing millions of Republicans? Mm -hmm. This man was so worried about meeting out retaliation. He was so worried about being malicious and angry and getting revenge that he didn't care about the fact that the things he was doing was affecting many Republicans. Now, in many instances, that state may only be 49% Republican, 50% Democrat, for all we know. You know what I'm saying? And yet, he was willing to punish the Republicans with the Democrats because he classified it as a blue state or he classified it as a red state. I want to tell you a little secret today. I'm, my eye is itchy for some reason. I want to tell you a little secret today, folks. I don't want Joe Biden to be king. I don't want Joe Biden to be... Uh, an emperor, I don't want Joe Biden to be a dictator. No country that has ever sold itself out and sold out democracy for dictatorship has ever ended well. When Fidel Castro went into power in Cuba, he was met with cheers and gladness and all oh, everybody was so happy that Fidel Castro overthrew the government before him and all oh, everybody was so happy. Um, it didn't take too long before Fidel Castro began to act like dictators. Right? And all of a sudden the people were turning against him and people were fleeing Cuba by the thousands trying to get away from his oppressive and uh, abusive regime. No dictatorship ends well. 
the people of Israel demanded a king. They went to Samuel and they said, we want a king. Talk to the Lord. We want a king like other nations have. And Samuel went to the Lord and, and, and he was so upset. He knew this was not God's desire because God said, no, I'm king of Israel. You don't need a man to be your king. I'm your king. And I'm going to tell you another little secret today for, for those idiotic folks out there who constantly try to suggest that America is anything even similar to Israel in terms of its relationship with God. It is not. Israel is a unique nation in the world. It is so for a purpose and for a divine reason. Israel's relationship with God <coughs> was established by God ultimately so that it could be an example to the church. I, I, I could carry on forever today. I'm trying not to. You know, look at the story of Jacob marrying Leah and Rachel. Uh, he kind of got tripped into marrying his first wife. Well, I got news for you. That was the type of God's marriage to Israel. But he really wanted the younger daughter. He really wanted the one that he was able to marry second. Do you follow what I'm telling you? And the second wife that Jacob was able to take, that's the one he loved. That's the one he worked for. That's the one he got tripped out of the first time. Do you follow what I'm saying? Israel and uh, the church, not America. Israel and the church. There is no national figure, none, in the New Testament. There is no nation that takes any special place in the world according to New Testament teaching. They're nowhere. America, yet yeah, it's a prosperous nation, it's a wealthy nation, all of these things. But it is not a divinely established nation and, you know, and all this garbage that preachers try to suggest and they try to paint America as though somehow it is in a sense, a modern Israel, and we have this unique relationship with God, and therefore we ought to rule uh, our nation as Israel ruled its nation, so on and so forth. Israel wanted a king. I'm trying to get back to my point. And the Lord warned. I'm going to give you what you want, but it's going to be sweet in your mouth and bitter in your belly. You're going to get Saul. I'm going to give you Saul. And everybody was elated when Saul came into power. But God told Samuel, tell them in advance. Here's what Saul's going to do. Here's what a king is going to do. He's going to wind up enslaving people. He's going to wind up using your children uh, for war. He's going to wind up using your children as his servants. You know, uh, his goals and his objectives are going to be very self-centered. And you're going to wind up oppressed. And you're going to wind up in a very bad state of being. But they still wanted a king. So God gave him a king. And just exactly as the Lord said, Saul became a tyrant. You know, he went well off the rails. So anyone today who has any understanding of Scripture... Anyone today who has any understanding of the, uh, the history of the world understands that uh, authoritarianism is a plague, it is a blight, it is a cancer, it is something that we ought to do everything in our power to avoid. I don't care who the figure is. I don't want Biden to be a permanent fixture in the White House. I don't want Kamala to be a permanent fixture in the White House any more than I wanted Obama to be a permanent fixture in the White House. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to finish. A lot of people, I'm going to make a lot of people mad right now, but I, anybody who knows me knows that I believe in speaking the truth and whether people like it or not, or whether they respond to it well or not, the pendulum swung 
so far to the right with Donald Trump, and Donald Trump was able to take advantage of many people in the Republican Party's angst because, I, I warned you in advance, some of y'all are going to get real ticked off at the preacher today. You may not want to recognize it, you may want, might not want to acknowledge it, but because there was as an equal swing to the left under Obama, to every action there is an equal reaction. When the pendulum swings way over here to the left, when that pendulum comes back around, it's not going to swing down here, Booby, and stop and come back. No, it's going to go all the way up to the other side on the right. Well, this is exactly what happened. There was a person, a cult of personality under Obama. There still are people, still, who virtually worship President Obama. There still are people who, if you say anything that sounds the least bit negative, like what I'm saying right now, oh, they go into a hissy fit. They have a fit. <coughs> Don't you dare say anything negative about Obama. Mr. Obama was elected president. He was elected to serve. He was twice elected. He served eight years. He did a fine job overall. I'm not complaining about policy. I'm not complaining about specifics. I could tell you there's some areas I feel like he was weak. There are areas I feel like he made some uh, poor choices and bad decisions. He did things in ways that I don't think necessarily was the right way to do certain things. But overall, I voted for it. Uh, the second time around, I voted for it. And, you know, I am pleased with him. I'm not, you know, I don't have any, any gripes. But I saw in the first election this cult-like mentality around him. And I warned about it. And I said, this is dangerous. Even though it was a Democrat. Even though he was liberal-minded and had liberal policies and what have you, I still warned then that it was dangerous to elevate him to the position of, you know, almost a cult leader. And many people get angry with me, they don't want to hear this, but it is a fact. Many things he did... People just didn't want to hear. He could do no wrong. Blah, 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 blah. You know, he, to this day, got here. Oh, he was the best president of my lifetime. Oh, let's bring Obama back. No, 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 no. That's not how America works. A president can serve eight years if he wins two elections. He can serve eight years. I don't want to bring any president back. I want to elevate someone new who can do the job and do it well. That's how our country works. That is how our Constitution is framed. And I want to do things in keeping with our Constitution. And it troubled me that so many people were, oh, we, we need to bring Obama back, we need to bring Obama back. No. Folks, listen. No dictator is a good dictator, regardless whether they be Democrat or whether they be Republican. Our republic must be defended at all costs. I really think today that there are still, even in my family, there are still many, many, many people who do not realize just how close we are. I'm not going to say we came, because until Biden is sworn in and Trump is out, uh, we're still in grave danger today. Many people don't realize how close we are to a complete and total loss of our democratic republic. Donald Trump's personality, his, his mental illness, to be frank, is such that this man 
will go to any length to dismantle our democracy and establish authoritarianism in the United States of America. And many people just do not, they will, they, I don't know whether they're so ignorant or uneducated, honestly, I, you know, I know I'm offended people, but I'm going to speak my mind. I don't know what the problem is, but they just don't see, Booby, how close we are to a complete and total loss of our democracy. And uh, I just pray that God will continue to intervene for our nation and that we will get to January 20th and there will be a transfer of power. And every election from this day forward, you must remember, every single election, you choose not only a candidate, but you choose whether we continue as a democratic republic as a representative government with servant leaders or whether we fall by the wayside and become an authoritarian autocracy, whether we become, you know, a theocracy. Uh, folks, every election in a democracy, every one of them is vital. It is imperative that everyone participate who is able. All right, that's all I'm going to say on that front today. I just want